Let's have a big welcome for Mike Kaplan, everyone. Thank you, everybody, for that big welcome that you were requested to give me. I appreciate it. Uh, my hope uh, for Mark Norman, who is just up here, uh, is that he becomes so successful that there are people who believe that he is Kevin Hart. That is my hope that people, like, like kids who don't know Kevin Hart, tune in to a Mark set. Like they turn it on like after it started, so they don't see it say, here's Mark Norman. They just see him at the end be like, I'm Kevin Hart. And they'll be like, I love Kevin Hart. And then they'll buy tickets. And then they'll see Kevin Hart. And they'll be like, TV adds 10 pounds and does different stuff. <laughs> That's what I hope for Mark Normand. I'm very funny, I'll start in a minute. But I, uh, I wanted to let you know, uh, I guess, let me, I'll demonstrate that I'm a comedian first and then uh, I'll stop doing comedy. Um, if you're already enjoying it, great. If not, uh, you're right as well. Everybody's experience is valid. So look at that, <laughs> one at a time. I'm a man, sorry ladies, okay. And uh, I started doing comedy uh, in Boston I, about 15, 16 years ago, I've been doing comedy. Uh, I started at Boston University. I went to school there. I was officially BU's funniest student in 2005. I won a competition, BU's funniest student, which means out of 32,000 people, I was the funniest of the 11 that were in the contest. So, <laughs> pretty good start. Uh, I'm wearing this, uh, this collared shirt tonight, this button-down shirt, uh, because we're filming and I like to look good when I can see it later. <laughs> like I, I put this on and uh, my girlfriend was like, oh, that looks really nice. Oh, it's because they're filming, right? And she's like, she's really nice. But she said to me, she's like, I thought of a mean joke. I was like, you know people can see you the rest of the time as well. <laughs> and she's like, I wouldn't say that to you, but I did. And here's the thing, I realized that I don't, not that I don't care, about people, about you, about audiences, but I guess I care more about me. I'm like, ooh, look, I look good. But right now, like, I'm not looking at me. Do you guys, but later I might be. Um, unless they're just turning the camera on right now. <laughs> All that stuff, let's get going. <laughs> Here we go. Kevin Hart. <laughs> Uh, I, don't, I don't even know like, what, in what form this is. Like, if you're watching this streaming right now, maybe you did just tune in. It's weird, like, today, you don't just tune into things as much. Like, you, could, you DVR things, you start at the beginning. You listen to a podcast. You ever, you ever listen to a podcast and you're like, well, if you're just tuning in, like, that doesn't... <laughs> if you just turned on the podcast and wanted to replicate your radio experience from the past <laughs> and just zoomed ahead to a bit, oh, we missed the beginning. Well, you just, yeah, I mean, look, I... I had a sad childhood <laughs> missing. One time when I was, uh, thank you. <laughs> I'm very good in between my jokes. I'm like one of the best. <laughs> like, it, who, I'm, like, you know, a lot of comedians are about bricks, but I'm like the only comedian who's like, we're extensively, exclusively on mortar. Do you understand? <laughs> so, the thing that holds it all together. If you just have bricks, it could fall down. But if you just have mortar, it looks gross. So, <laughs> but it's probably functional. Probably, if you had to have only bricks or only mortar, I'd go with mortar. <laughs> Can any, is anybody here trained to prove me wrong? Does anybody here have any information about architecture that I don't? Good. <laughs> I, would, I would definitely welcome it. I don't, I, please heckle me with accurate math. <laughs> That's, but only accurate math, not inaccurate math. Here we go. Getting ready to get started with my set. So, what joke am I in the middle of? I look like this, uh, I'm wearing this shirt, you got it. Sometimes. I'll, uh, I'll look at video or like a picture of me on stage, like after the fact, and I'll see like that I'm standing like uh, uh, in, a, in a way. And I'll, I asked my, my last girlfriend, I was like, am I standing weird in that picture? And she's like, that's how you always stand. And I'm like, that's not, that's not what I'm looking, I'm looking, <laughs> you're not answering my question. Do I, do I always stand weird? You know what I mean? <laughs> I am, does anybody here, clap your hands if you identify as not weird. Clap your hands if you think you're not weird. Two people in a room full of like 50, pretty weird, you know what I mean? <laughs> you're weird if you think you're not weird right now. Like it's, everybody, everybody's weird. Here's, I, was, I have another friend who's a comedian uh, and he's weird. 
and I was telling a friend, like, you should check out this comedian. Why not say his name? Everybody should check out Nick Vatterot. He's a super funny weirdo. And I was telling a friend, and she's like, Mike, I have to tell you something. And I was like, oh, I know I'm weird. And she's like, oh, thank God. You know, so uh, let's get started with my comedy. Um, that's like my catchphrase that I do in between every joke is let's get started with my comedy. So are you ready to comedy? It's already been happening. It's like the comedy. By the end of my set, listen, let me start off before we get into comedy uh, with a philosophical concept that I'm familiar with. Only recently, I learned about this thing called the heap paradox. Do you guys know what a heap of sand is? Of course, it's like a bunch of grains of sand. How many? It's not like a definitive number, but it can't be one. One grain of sand is not a heap. Two is probably not a heap. Three? Well, you gotta be like a thousand. Maybe a hundred, maybe a, well, what number? Which one is it? If it's a hundred, why isn't it 101? Why isn't it 99? Like, which one is it between two and a hundred that makes it turn into a heap? Which grain? And the reason I'm telling you this is because this is what my comedy is like. Like, I'll eventually be doing it, but you won't know <laughs> which joke, which line, which word turned it from not a joke into a joke. For some of you, it was in the middle of this joke. And for some, you're like, still not yet. But really good in between jokes. I sometimes I get to the end of a comedy show and every single member of the audience will come up to me individually and whisper into my ear, I liked it. Uh, <laughs> I know my demographic. It's people who love me and understand why there are those who might not. I am like the kombucha of comedy. Like, I'm really good for you, but a lot of people are like, is this what it's supposed to be like? And it is. If you aren't enjoying it, it's an acquired taste. So by the end, by the end of my set, you'll be like, that was comedy. I think it was comedy the whole time. I'm the M. Night Shyamalan of comedy. M. Night Shyamalamity? No. I already, I answered no before you had a chance. M. Night Shyamalamity, no. Do, 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 do. M. Night Shyamalamity, do, 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 do. Okay, so before we get started, let me... I'm going to do a song for you guys. It's a song with you guys, a sing-along. You guys up for a sing-along. You know how a sing-along works. So here we... Thank you so much. Somebody's sh shaking her head no. You don't have to participate. But the person who yelled yes, you must participate. So here we go. You guys know how it works, so here's the first verse. Ah, okay. Everybody sing along, it's the sing along song. You don't know the words, so you can't join in. And there's no discernible pattern, so what are you supposed to do? And every time I sing the sing along song, it goes a little bit different. Okay, so that's the first verse. So uh, you guys now understand how it goes. Let's do verse number two. Here's the second verse of the sing along song. The melody and the words are different. So even if you wanted to participate in good faith, there is very little way that you could cause it's a joke. Okay, so pretty good on that one. Uh, let's try one more. Here's the third verse. It's short. Okay, let's try um, one more verse here. Here is the fourth verse. It's a joke. You clearly aren't supposed to sing. And one time there was a person who joined in because they were good at doing improv games. Okay, so... That's true, that really, it really threw me off. I was like, how are you doing this? They're like, I'm just watching your mouth like real fast. <laughs> Which is a weird sentence that I don't think I've ever said. <laughs> I was just watching your mouth real fast. <laughs> Look at that, it's comedy for some people now. So, let's see, uh, oh yeah, it's been, it's been almost enough. Uh, time doesn't really exist, but there are other comedians and I have places to be. But, and also places don't exist, but you know, it seems like they do. Um, for more on that, check out other comedy that I've done. I, I do have a special that's on Amazon. You can. It used to be on Netflix. You could have seen it if it was uh, if you had if you had Netflix or if you knew uh, any person. Um, I 100% don't know why more than one person has Netflix. Like, I got my password from my old roommate. He got his from his parents. They got theirs from Kevin Bacon. Like, why doesn't everybody <laughs> do that? Uh, you can give it. It's now on Amazon. It was previously in between. It was only available at Whole Foods. And uh, then Amazon took it over, so pretty good. I don't have to do it in the kale aisle anymore. Was pretty much at home there. So I uh, don't know if I give off a kale vibe, but I take in kale vibes. Anyway, um, what, what instruments do you play? I play the kale vibes. So uh, sounds like I live in Brooklyn. It makes sense. Here we go. Uh, I like that Brooklyn is everything now. Like <laughs> I've seen, like there's, you know, passive aggressive Brooklyn. There's like old school, hey, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> that's... Fonzie Brooklyn. Um, Fonzie Brooklyn. Uh, uh, let's just reset and get some room tone now. Great. Uh, that's, a lot of comedians don't get room tone, and then what are you going to do? At the end of your set, just uh, live the rest of your life? Not me. 
not this guy. I'm living my life right now. I don't wait till the end. I'll live when I'm dead. What? Schrodinger's life. Okay, so... Oh, somebody's snorting. It was the person who didn't want to sing along with the song. I'm sorry to make you feel that way. But I am not sorry to make everybody else feel that way. Look how much joy you've brought to everybody with them laughing at your snort. <laughs> oh, and you're right near the camera. It's probably picking it up. <laughs> let's get a let's get a close up with one of those other cameras. We don't have any other cameras. Okay, great. <laughs> it's just a, it's all one shot. Um, like that Eminem song. So uh, I'm like the Eminem of uh, nothing. So. Uh, <laughs> I'm like the Buddhist Eminem, I guess, you know, the Eminem that doesn't exist. So, uh, my special is on uh, Amazon. You can give it five stars if you like it. You can give it five stars even if you don't like it, in fact. Did you guys know that? You can well, Think about how many stars are in our galaxy. There's like 100 billion, so five is real low. You got me. <laughs> I got a one-star review that I liked. One star from a guy that was like, I don't know about these jokes. They might be good. He talked too fast. I'm dumb. And... <laughs> What I like most about that one is it's more a review of himself than me. You understand? He was like, I don't know about this, but I do know about this, and no thank you. <laughs> uh, so, just trying to finish the first couple jokes I started. In 2010, I was on Last Comic Standing. Millions of people watched the show. Thousands of comedians went out for it. I came in fifth place. Fifth place of all the comedians that year. And the better, better news, even better, is the guy who came in fourth died. So I'm fourth now. And... <laughs> Wish he didn't, he was my friend. But also, he would have loved this joke. He would have loved it. He loved dark comedy. He loved humor about death. He liked joking about these things that we don't all talk about. If he was here tonight, he would, uh, well, he couldn't, would, I wouldn't have the joke. But if he was here, <laughs> sort of like Gift of the Magi. Uh, would have loved it if he could. If he's a ghost in heaven, that's not how it works. But uh, would you know my name? There are no ghosts in heaven. I don't know if we can use all the... We don't have the rights to these songs, but uh, we do have the wrongs to them. That's when you copyright infringe. Guys, in conclusion. Uh, in 2015, just taking you year by year, so in a couple years, I'll come back and tell you about 2020. Hindsight. Um, that's the theme of the next election. So... Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm, hey, guys, I'm sorry that I said election. <laughs> it, 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 is a, it is a real, like, I am now, in this day and age, like, it's more, like, life is more complicated. Life is so much harder for a man today, you know what I mean? And, uh, like, a straight, white, cisgender, able man. Uh, so many things. Look, I'm, I'm a straight, white, male, American Jew. Four out of five, perfect. But other than that, uh, which one's not? So... Sincerely, after the 2016 election, I honestly, I used to know how to answer, how are you? Do you know what I mean? I used to know how to answer. I would be like, so far, so good. You know, I don't know the future, but I'm grateful for what I've accomplished so far. So far, so good. That's what I want. Uh, now, after 2016, people are like, how are you? I'm like, life is a rich tapestry, you know? <laughs> How's everything? Ooh, everything's a lot. I'm okay in like a but, but I'm part of everything. Everything's not okay, but I'm part of it. And then they're gone, and I don't have to talk to them anymore. So, <laughs> don't have to know how to answer. 2015, that's where we are in this set. I was on America's Got Talent. America's Got Talent, a show where they ask you things like, are you the greatest comedian out there? And I think, I'm like, I answered, I was like, I think I'm the greatest comedian in here. <laughs> Pointed at my heart, they did not use that uh, take. So, it's a weird show to be on. As a comedian, your jokes are competing against how cute a child might sing, for example. <laughs> It's like if in the Olympics, the events competed against each other. It's like the hurdles versus the snowmobile. Like what, that's not even the same season. Like the next up, the pole vault versus the javelin. I put my money on the javelin, probably. The javelin would take the pole vaulter pretty, pretty handily. It's like, I was, I was telling jokes and I was up against a lady who, she was from the circus and she shot a crossbow. That was her talent. I'm glad we went separate. <laughs> Now, Mike, you make fun of this lady, and then she shoots you with her crossbow. Uh, here's, I told jokes, she shot a crossbow so accurately, it hit a target attached to another crossbow. That one fires, hits a target attached to another crossbow. That one fires, it, that keeps happening. Eight crossbows go off in the span of about two seconds. The final arrow goes into an apple that's over her own head. <laughs> leaving the judges to answer the question, am I funnier than that crossbow? <laughs> 
And officially, we both did move on to the next round. So I am technically as funny as that crossbow. I am. This is crossbow caliber comedy right here. And uh, sincerely, this is true. She did not show up to the next round. So I hope she's okay. I don't know <laughs> what happened. But I do think that she would have loved this joke. So thank you guys so much. My name's Mike Kevin Hart Kaplan. Uh, thanks so much, everybody.